Good morning, folks. Today we've got top news on Venus, the ionosphere, the sun, and Earth's internal skeleton. The southern filament we eyed yesterday is stifling its destabilization, but there's more to see starting at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day where we eye to the right side, both north and south, pops and ripple reverberations of the releases. These CMEs are exiting the non-Earth-facing side of the sun. Meanwhile, as we watch those again in 171 angstroms, you can also see bottom left, the incoming active region is less bright and needs considerable development in order to flare. Folks, the entirety of the coronal hole solar wind enhancement is seen top left in purple. It was weak, took its time and came on slowly, and didn't last very long. Geomagnetic conditions have remained quiet. Up first in the news, it's a head shaker for what I'm guessing is about 80% of our viewers. Those GMO mosquitoes were released in Florida. Hope they know what they're doing. Up next, we're heading out to Venus where they are noticing a change in its upper atmosphere. It's ionosphere, actually. While Venus lacks the magnetic protection we have here with Earth's field, its ionosphere isn't so bad and it induces a field of its own. Parker flew through it and definitively confirmed the guesses from recent observations. The ionosphere is getting thinner. Now they blame the sunspot cycle effects because they measured during sunspot maximum in the early 90s and then again in sunspot minimum in mid-2020. But the extent of the thinning and the fact that it's not like they saw it puff back up in guess observations during the sunspot maxima we had between those two observations, one might start to think this is more than just an 11-year modulation. Speaking of ionospheres, good one here on the rapid and profound particle forcing from the sun. It is well established that solar flaring and geomagnetic storms work the ionosphere, but much more is needed in terms of understanding the actual coupling with the solar wind and the electrodynamics of the Earth system thereafter. These excitements to the ceiling of the global electric circuit is how the sun is able to modulate the atmosphere in a matter of minutes. Up next, it's another solar forecast using the first few months of the cycle into the model. This one breaks the common mold and predicts a somewhat larger sunspot cycle. It not only deviates from most predictions that will have a sunspot cycle much like cycle 24, but also our own analysis based on the polar magnetic fields of the sun, about where we were last cycle this time. I'll say this, with Earth's weakening magnetic field, I really hope the outliers are wrong here, a sunspot cycle like this, and we're in big trouble. Last but not least, we're heading down to the LLSVPs, the internal skeleton of Earth. We had previously seen confirmation that core mantle plumes finger up to most hot spots, including Hawaii. Now, they're able to confirm the first half of that, that Hawaii is connected all the way down to the transition zone. And they're setting the stage to confirm that the Pacific LLSVP is indeed breaching from the core mantle boundary all the way out to Hawaii. For those wondering, the other side, Hydra breaches up and out to the South Atlantic Anomaly, the East African Rift, and even towards the Middle East. For more on this Earth skeleton and how it will work the planet in the solar flash and magnetic flip scenario, check out our disaster playlist or our book, The Next End of the World. Get it at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.